All right, everybody. Uh, Greg and I are right here at the research farm to talk a little bit about some of the technology that's available to us on today's farms and how we can use that to manage some of the variability that, that exists within our farms, within our soils, and within our crops. Some of these plants will. Uh, these would have been put in on uh, May 22nd. 22nd of May, I think we twin rowed here. Um, population was around 155 to 160,000. I think we've got all of that here for a final stand. You can see the beans have actually done quite well here. We got lots of branches, lots of nodes, lots of pods, and pods are starting to fill some seeds. So we're away to the races here. So um, this summer has been kind of the tale of two two summers in terms of weather. If we all remember, we went through quite a stretch there back in uh, late June, early July. We had about a three week drought there where we, could, we were concerned what the soybean crop was gonna amount to. Um, then we've got a pile of rain and just the the vegetative growth in these beans has become, um, I don't want to say problematic, but it's definitely definitely changed here when the weather turns. So uh, we always talk about fungicides on soybeans when we hit that you know, R2, R3 stage. Um, so you know, a lot of people at that time were kind of on the fence because of the drought, because of the crop potential about, you know, should we spray fungicide, should we not? Um, some did, some didn't. So we'll find out the results on that. But again, with the weather has changed and how thick some of these canopies are, I think we're into now what well, we've got some potential for some white mold issues. So um, we had a few guys that actually went and did some second pass fungicide on soybeans specifically for white mold. And I guess how this all plays into the whole variable rate strategy is um, using granular, using Egg Studio, some of the tools that we have, we were able to look at images and really figure out, you know, where the potential hotspots might be for white mold. Um, general rule of thumb is white mold gets your best crop, not your worst one. So um, it generally doesn't show up on a whole farm or whole field from corner to corner. It hits those areas that have got the most canopy, the most biomass. So really trying to figure out where those areas are. And then from that, we were able to write some prescriptions and actually target some applications based on those areas. So uh, I think it was 32 acre fields. And based on the prescription, we wound up spraying about 17 of it. So roughly 50% of the field got a second pass of fungicide and we put a check strip in there. So we'll get some data here at harvest time, hopefully and figure out whether that second pass paid or not. But just the whole idea of, you know, not treating maybe the entire field, but parts of the field or parts of the farm, you know, I think it's good in terms of obviously input management cost to the grower and, and results in terms of yield response and, and weight mold control. So that was kind of our strategy with with soybeans and fungicides when it comes to variable rate technology and that's how we kind of handled that and we've got a few different trials out so